amiodarone and overactive thyroid. Amiodarone is a commonly prescribed antiarrhythmic medication that can lead to thyroid dysfunction, including amiodarone-associated thyrotoxicosis, AAT. AAT is a complex condition characterized by thyrotoxicosis in patients receiving amiodarone therapy. It poses a significant challenge for both healthcare professionals and patients due to its diverse clinical presentation, potential for severe complications, and management complexities. This paper aims to provide an in-depth understanding of AAT, including its symptoms, investigations, and management strategies, to aid healthcare professionals in timely diagnosis and effective management, as well as to educate patients about this potential side effect. Amiodarone, a class 3 antiarrhythmic medication, is widely used for the treatment of various cardiac arrhythmias. However, it is associated with a range of thyroid abnormalities, including AAT. AAT can present as two distinct forms, type 1, iodine-induced hyperthyroidism, and type 2, destructive thyroiditis. It is crucial to recognize and differentiate AAT from other causes of thyrotoxicosis to initiate appropriate management strategies promptly. AAT can manifest with a wide spectrum of symptoms, which can often overlap with those of other thyrotoxic conditions. Common symptoms include palpitations, heat intolerance, weight loss, tremors, fatigue, and emotional lability. However, some patients may remain asymptomatic or present with nonspecific complaints, making diagnosis challenging. In severe cases, AAT can lead to heart failure, arrhythmias, or thyroid storm, necessitating urgent medical attention. Accurate diagnosis of AAT relies on a combination of clinical evaluation and laboratory investigations. Measurement of thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, free thyroxine, T4, and triiodothyronine, T3, levels is crucial. AAT typically presents with low or suppressed TSH levels, elevated free T4 levels, and normal or elevated T3 levels. Imaging studies, such as thyroid ultrasound or scintigraphy, can help distinguish between type 1 and type 2 AAT. The management of AAT involves several considerations, including the type and severity of thyrotoxicosis, cardiac status, and potential drug interactions. Treatment options include medical therapy, radioactive iodine, RI, therapy, and surgical intervention. Beta blockers are often used as a first-line therapy to control symptoms. Antithyroid medications, such as propylthiouracil or methimazole, can be considered for type 2 AAT. In certain cases, discontinuation or dose reduction of amiodarone may be necessary. Rye therapy or thyroidectomy may be considered in refractory or severe cases. Regular monitoring of thyroid function is crucial during and after treatment for AAT. The duration of treatment varies based on the individual patient's response. It is important to educate patients about potential complications, adherence to medication, and regular follow-up. With appropriate management, the prognosis of AAT is generally favorable, although recurrence of thyrotoxicosis after treatment cessation can occur. Amiodarone-associated thyrotoxicosis is a challenging condition that requires prompt recognition, accurate diagnosis, and appropriate management to prevent severe complications. Healthcare professionals should maintain a high index of suspicion in patients receiving amiodarone therapy, particularly in those presenting with symptoms suggestive of thyrotoxicosis. Collaboration between endocrinologists, cardiologists, and other healthcare. Follow for more. Like, share and subscribe.